According to Checkpoint researchers, snake keylogger was first discovered in the wild in November of 2020, and in October of 2022 was the second most common malware variant in operation behind Agent Tesla. Today, I'm going to look into a snake keylogger sample because I've never looked into one before. We are back on Malware Bazaar. We have to confirm we're not a robot. Ah, oh, we've already done Redline. Let's let's go with Snake Keylogger. Use that 7-zip. Fire up. Maybe some PE Studio as well. Bang. Oh, okay, it's .NET. So we can decompile this, have a little bit of fun. Let's open up DN Spy. Okay, so we've got Nullet. And what we can see straight away is assembly product name of Vanish. Might be a little bit interesting. The manifest also is my application.app. Look, sometimes that gets set by developers, sometimes it doesn't. It's like there might be a fair amount of obfuscation in this. Oh yeah, we've got a compiler timestamp of 2071. So uh, it's probably been time stomped. We can just probably double check that. The time date stamp, it's in hex. Uh, BF8, FE, FE6, and that looks to be what we just found using CFF Explorer as well. So it has been time stopped. So we do have this nullet.exe. Let's see whether there's an entry point we can jump to. So going to the entry point, we can see that it is firing off this listener. To... Oh, it's creating an instance of this particular type, and it's using this particular data, this byte array. Let's see what this decompiling does. Okay, so it's joining a bunch of different byte arrays and then it is returning that and it's decrypting it. Ooh, okay, so there might be some encryption for this particular snake. You can see that it's using uh, a few transformers here that are of interest. And we'll create a breakpoint here. So we'll move into this when it defines this byte array so that we can figure out what that essentially comes out as at a breakpoint here it's running and we've hit a breakpoint so we might want to step into this so now we've actually got a little bit more appearing down in our registers here we can see all the different byte arrays that we are working with and I don't want to go into the ins and outs of these so I kind of want to step over some of these functions because by stepping over that we should now have the byte array decrypted here. So let's see if we just save this, we'll just call it code, move on over to downloads. We've got a new .NET binary. And look at this, straight away, we've now got some more stuff that was essentially trying to be invoked into memory. Let's say this information has been stolen from a legitimate extension of some kind. We can't exactly go to the entry point because it is a DLL but we'll just go for a little bit of a browse. A lot of this looks like legitimate code. So when we see, yeah, something that doesn't look right like this, it's gonna be a lot more uh, obvious. So these are, these are doing nothing. These classes are literally nothing. And then you've finally got this and we're coming back to loading and invoking again. So, oh, 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 oh. so we've got some more code that's gonna be loaded here. You can see it's gonna take in the raw assembly. We might add a breakpoint here we'll look at adding a breakpoint here as well you wind up having the actual array here of the code that we were talking about example.dll so you can see it is the the name that we had before so us continuing should have no impact we should be able to continue the code i'm gonna break this myself i think we're now we're now where we wanted it to hit anyway so let's step into and yeah now we've got this return statement uh, step into see where we're at make sure that it gets this information first so step over that step over that now we are returning it step into that step into that 15 minutes later step into and step into again one eternity later yeah so it's this assembly here a lot of wasted time so we have our new class here. It took a little bit, but we do have it. This is now third stage that we have. So we go file, save module, code two dot dat, because we didn't have that before. So you got methods, get processes. This might actually start to be the snake key logger. Uh, we can continue going with F11 and see where we land. You've got NT unmap view of section and read process memory. So all kind of interesting stuff. It may be throwing something else into memory. 
we may be on to a winner here. Oh, heavily obfuscated stuff here, so that's a little bit interesting. We've got data, we've got this bite array. Yep, that looks like it. Let's save this to code 3. So code 3 is a lot bigger, 131. It's .NET again. <laughs> Uh, getting stuff from the resource section. But now we actually see things that look like what it's doing, right? So this might actually be the final payload from extracting all that information because we've got this looking for Mozilla Firefox. Yeah, so this mozglue.dll and nss3.dll are key DLLs used for storing credentials for the Firefox browser. And so if you see them come up, there's a good chance that something here is doing some sort of credential harvesting. So there's a good chance that this is our this is our final payload, essentially opening up, running a DE4 dot on it. But yep, cool. And now it's cleaned it and check out what code three cleaned is doing. And it might just be a little bit nicer, may not be perfect, but you can see that it's currently a lot nicer to look at. Ah, oh, look at this. Straight away, we get a lot more information. Snake tracker, the snake stealer. Yeah, looks like it might, that might be the name of it. And basically we can run through this entire process now because this is the final payload from all that obfuscation. But yeah, rolling through it, you can see it's just trying to steal all this information, username, password. What I'm interested in is seeing where it all gets sent because it's malware as a service, it's going to have some sort of configuration in it to essentially determine where it goes. I've never actually reversed this malware before. So what else we got? Digital product ID, trying to take that. String reverse, so username, value. Okay, cool obfuscation, bro. Oh, hey, if it works, it works. Stealing wireless LAN information and passwords. Purple accounts, still stealing stuff. Filezilla. Snake tracker, blah blah blah. Got all of them run. And then we've got here we go. Here's what we need. Alright. So you've got this dynamic DNS, I guess. You got duck DNS and DNS.army. So dynamic DNS, this is where it'll be exfiltrated to. And it's going to get your processes. Could actually be that this is getting pumped directly to a telegram channel as well and there is this base 64 encoded string and here's your key logger as well identify key pushes so yeah that's a look into the uh the snake information stealer i guess did you find this analysis useful did i go over too much too quickly did i just skip over things kind of do it too abrupt let me know let me know your thoughts in the comment section below